We're all going to learn something today called the Reign of Hope. My guests are Jennifer Ricker, Dr. Laura Bauer. Thank you both for being on today to tell us about this. All right, Reign of Hope. What is it? What's your elevator speech? Because you're the executive director and the founder. Yes. Reign of Hope is a nonprofit organization, and we teach children to care. We really focus in on how our actions impact the world around us so that we can empower kids and individuals to really understand how we can make a difference in our communities, in our schools, in our neighborhoods. You're a mom. You started this with basically no money. What was the push? to do this. Why did you have a calling to put this together? That's interesting. I, it actually comes from personal experiences. Before I met my husband, I was in an abusive relationship. And removing myself from that situation, from the relationship, from the environment, I looked back and I wanted to do something. I wanted to initially help other women who were facing a, situ a similar situation. And then the volunteer opportunity didn't come along. It didn't mm -hmm. work out. So I wanted to dive deeper. And I thought, what if we can teach kids to care in a way that as they grow up, it just becomes second nature. And they really understand how their actions are impacting others. We want to introduce Dr. Laura Bauer Phipps, who is a professor of elementary education at Southern. How did the two of you meet? How did you come together to get involved with Reign of Hope? Jennifer and I attend the same church and she approached me and a few other educators after church and said, I have this plan. It might sound crazy, but will you look at it? And I looked at it and it, it was a perfect fit with what I believe is important in education in the world and also a perfect fit for Southern. And so the more we've talked, um, the stronger our partnership has grown. So it started off with me kind of being a consultant and suggesting a few books for her to read or giving her a little bit of um, education ease to be able to <laughs> oh, speak as she walked into. <laughs> you are a year old now. What mm -hmm. has happened in a year's time with the Reign of Hope .org nonprofit? What has happened? A lot, actually. We have, in the last year, we piloted five programs, which impacted 100 students in New Haven and Hamden. So that's really exciting. But it actually went beyond that. So in addition to those 100 students, we connected them with the communities. One of our programs, Senior Matters, connected second graders all the way down to kindergarten with seniors in the community through letter writing. And then in the end, we had a little friendly feast where they got to meet each other. We also have impacted seven what we call pre-service teachers, which Laura can really touch on that. You brought your department in with Reign of Hope, and what are your students getting to do through this organization? Because both of you are changing the world in your community, and it's awesome. <laughs> so how, what are the students doing at Southern? I teach curriculum classes, and so instead of just writing lesson plans that will be used once, my students are writing curriculum for Reign of Hope. And then a few select students who Jennifer interviews and then chooses are able to teach in the after school programs. And so they're getting a lot of teaching experience. How do schools get involved? Let's say there are a lot of schools that see this across the state yes. and they want to get their kids involved. How does this grow bigger beyond Hamden and New Haven? That's what we're working on right now. A lot of it is. Well, obviously, there's a funding need involved because there is staffing. There is you're doing all it on a shoestring. Let's just exactly. call it what it is, right? <laughs> exactly. A shoestring. Exactly. But as we're building the programs and as we're getting it out there, we're able to simplify our lesson plans, simplify how we're going about structuring our programs so that we can take it to other schools. And the idea is that we want to publish our all of the programs in a way that we can teach the teachers teach the schools to implement our programs and that way they can take the programs to their schools. No charge right now to students. The schools are supporting your program. Is yes. that correct? Yeah. Okay, you start out in elementary school. Yes. So with, with a ball. I, mean, <laughs> what is on, I, I love this. It's a beach ball. What, what is on this? Was this your idea, by the way? No, actually, this is one of the teachers that we had from Southern. We were See? trying to figure out are the students really getting the lesson? We need to be able to gauge it. But in an after-school program, you can't have writing. They've been in school all day long. Right. So you need Make to do fun. something. Exactly. So we use a beach ball. And what we do is we have them throw it around with each other. And wherever their thumb lands, they answer the question. So what is something you can do to help your community? 
At and first, this is posed to a second grader. You start with right. second grade. What, what yes. do they say? And that's in the beginning, it's really hard, and you kind of have to pull it out of them a little bit. But as the weeks go on, they can say, oh, I can clean up trash in my playground. It's something so simple that when they're able to answer it quicker, you know, wow, they're getting it. And it's really exciting to see the students grow. Are some of your teachers coming up with these questions? How, how are they helping with the beach balls? Since one of them, yes. it was their idea. Absolutely. It was um, one of the students' ideas, and they worked together to develop the questions. They worked together to also develop some of the other fun things that happen in the classroom. Where do you see this going at Southern? How big can this get? Do you have any idea? That's a great question because we want to make sure that we're... Because it's a pilot program. It, it is. Right now. And, and we don't want to push students into it, our, our pre-service teachers into it, if it's not part of who they are and what they want to do. Right. So we have to be very selective. I don't know how. That, that's a question that we've asked each other. How many students do we need? How many students do we want? Well, I love this idea that the two of you go to the same church. You say to her, she's kind of your consultant. Now we've got Southern Connecticut State University involved. You've got schools in Hamden and New Haven involved. Mm -hmm. This is really how great ideas grow by connecting and networking to each other. We have a bigger beach ball here, and this is for your middle school students. And yes, what happens? The, big, the words get bigger, the messages <laughs> get stronger. What happens in that so, age group? This is from one of our programs called Lyrics and Music Matters. And it's the mm -hmm. idea that when we're listening and turning on the radio, a lot of the songs aren't necessarily age appropriate for middle school. You think? So <laughs> it's the idea to get them to really listen to the lyrics and the power of the words. So one of the things is name a song with a positive message. So you really get the kids to think about what they're listening to and what it is. Um, there's another one on here. As a songwriter, what would your message be? And that's where we take the program is we throw it out there to the students to say, you have two minutes. What would your message be to the world if you could write a song? And then they write a song. Now tell me how that works. They write a song, do they perform it somehow? They actually do, which it's on our website, one of the performances. Rainofhope.org, go there. Yes. <laughs> and so what we do is, and it's really what the teachers do, is they work with the students to understand figurative language, again, in a fun way. So we play categories to study alliterations and who can make the longest alliteration and who can do different, different play on words that you hear. From that, we say, OK, here's the elements of a song. And they break it down. And then we take the message they want. We put them into groups, because we really want them to learn collaboration and how to work together, because that's a fundamental skill that we know they're going to need throughout their entire life. Well, you have a lot of lyrics, having watched the, um, the Music Awards last night. Yes. There was a lot of, shall we say, inappropriate things mm -hmm. for middle school students. So you're kind of swimming upstream. Mm -hmm. right. This is the world in which they live. So how do you counteract that? You're doing the best you can. Right, and, and you teach them to recognize what they're listening to. It sounds like in one of the after-school programs, um, my, my students were telling me as teachers that they developed a playlist that students could listen to while the students were doing their homework. And the kids had an ear trained to, is this appropriate? And at one point they said, wait, is this? Oh no, it's okay. So they really were listening. So you're changing the thinking mm. with kids. Yes. To and take responsibility and to maybe stand up for something they don't really like. Exactly. And that's the key part of Lyrics and Music Matters is we never say to them, that song's not, in, that song's not appropriate. We never say to them, it's a bad song. It's really about getting the student to think about the words and decide, is this the right song for you? Is this the message you want to listen to every single day? And then we can get them to say, OK, maybe not, or maybe they still like it. And that's fine, as long as we know that they're thinking about how the lyrics impact them and how it impacts our community. How do others get involved with reignofhope.org? What, what are your needs? Get it out there. <laughs> what, do you, what do you need, and how do they get involved? There's, because we're grassroots and we're starting from nothing, there's so many opportunities for people to get involved, which is exciting. We have two new board members that we're interviewing this week to get more board members. So for if you're a small business and you've been thinking about joining a board, then there's opportunities for that. If you are just looking to make a donation, then our website accepts donations, and you can definitely do that. 
we need volunteers to go into the retirement center and work with the seniors for Seniors Matters. We need more individuals to just come out and say, okay, I'll come and help you with one of the programs and volunteer my time. There's endless possibilities. One of the fun opportunities coming up is that Southern Future Teachers Organization is going to sponsor a fun run yes. that benefits Reign of Hope, yes. which is just a neat example of the organizations giving back to each other. Yes. <laughs> well, I just, I applaud your efforts and what you're doing to change your community, Thank and you. I hope that folks go to, to uh, reignofhope.org and help you out with this. Thank you both for being on. I really appreciate it. Thank you Thank for you. having us.